Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. Today, I want to respond to Pope Francis's new document, Traditiones Custodes, Guardians of Tradition, which is a document that is essentially restricting the offering of the Latin Mass, the Old Mass, the Tridentine Mass. Pope Benedict, back in, I think it was 2007, released Samorum Pontificum, a document that said from now on, priests no longer need to get an indult if they want to say the Old Mass. They can just start saying it. And if they have a stable group of people in their parish that would like it, then they really should provide for them this Old Mass, the ancient form of the Roman Rite. He said it had never been abrogated, it had never been abolished, never been banned. And... Because of that, many priests started saying the Latin Mass, and it looks like Pope Francis has got a bit worried about the explosion of the Latin Mass, how popular it's become, how divisive he thinks it has become, and now he has put the power back in the hands of the bishop. The title of the document, Custodes Traditiones, it's a reference to the bishop as the guardian of the tradition. Some people might say that the document is ironically titled because it looks as if the Pope is banning tradition rather than safeguarding it. The name, however, is referring to the fact that the bishop is the one who is the guardian of the tradition. And as such, he's the one who will have authority to decide which parishes are having the Latin Mass or which churches are going to have the Latin Mass. So... So basically, it looks like things are going to be back to how they used to be prior to the motu proprio of Pope Benedict, with a few a few differences. But basically, it's back to the local bishop now. If your local bishop likes the Latin Mass and thinks it's a great thing, a good thing, uh, to nourish the lives and the spirituality of the faithful, then probably this new decree will not affect you very much. Technically... The bishop ought to follow the guidelines. The document gives guidelines that bishops should follow. It says bishops should follow. They should follow the guidelines that the Pope is setting out in this motu proprio. But ultimately, it does say that bishops are the ones who are the guardians of tradition. And some bishops might well say, well, the document says I'm the guardian of the tradition. And so therefore, you know, I'm the guardian and I, I, can, I can do the Latin Mass in my diocese how I would like it. I think some bishops will take that approach. But others will say, yeah, I'm the guardian of tradition and I want to follow these recommendations, these guidelines that the Pope has set out. And if you're in a diocese where that happens, then you will find the following is going to occur. Number one, from now on, parish churches, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to have the, the Latin Mass anymore. The Latin Mass is going to be in chapels, you know, chapels of ease, mass centres, places that are not the parish church. So if you go to a parish where they've got the Latin Mass every Sunday in the parish church, it looks to me like the like your parish priest is going to be in a difficult position if his bishop says, look, I want to follow, follow this these guidelines. Maybe the parish priest will be able to, maybe you've got a a mass centre in your parish or a school chapel or a hospital chapel or there's some hall maybe even a hall where the mass can be offered but it looks like the decree is saying that the parish church parish churches are not to have the latin mass it does acknowledge the existence of personal parishes for the latin mass but kind of says that these shouldn't be proliferated there shouldn't be new personal latin mass parishes established on the positive side you could say that this decree is really putting the latin mass in the hands of the sspx and the traditional groups institutes because they are not affected really by this essentially they can continue because they don't have parishes they've got shrines they've got chapels and so this document isn't going to hit them very hard although it does say that bishops should think twice about whether they need these traditional groups operating in their diocese i think most likely uh the result of this letter will be a lot of difficulty 
for priests in the Darsten world who have been trying to introduce a Latin mass, trying, they, priests that feel that this is a good thing that really nourishes the faith and introduces them into a deeper level of prayer and interior participation in the mass. Those priests are going to find this document a real kick in the balls because you know, it undermines exactly their, their project and it tells them that what they've been doing should stop. I don't know how this this uh, goes along with the idea of, of pastoral accompaniment to people because a lot of people in the last, what is it now, 14 years have grown attached more to the Latin Mass. There's stable communities in lots of parishes. And what, is a bishop going to phone up all the parishes that have maybe got stable communities of, like I'm thinking about my diocese, there's some parishes which have got a stable community of, of like 100 maybe, or even 150 on the Sunday attending a mass in the parish, the old mass. Is the bishop going to phone up that priest and say, yeah, that stable community of 150, that's got to be disbanded now. They all need to go to... The SSPX, they need to go to, you know, we don't have any traditional parishes in our diocese. We have a presence of the SSPX, that's about it. So is that what the bishop will ask? I don't think so. It's going to be really difficult for bishops. That's why I said maybe bishops will just take the opening statement that they are the guardians of the tradition and see the rest as kind of guidelines. They're called guidelines. They're not things that necessarily the bishop is obliged to do under mortal sin or disobedience the document acknowledges he is the one who's in charge of the tradition some difficult things difficult thing for newly ordained priests newly ordained priests are being told that they have to get permission now from their bishop to be able to say the latin mass and the bishop has to ask or consult with the pope with rome in order to let the newly ordained priests offer the latin mass that's really gonna restrict the uptake of newly ordained clergy offering the latin mass and maybe that's because the pope had noticed that it was the young priests and the newly ordained that the ones who were offering the latin mass as to those dasts and priests who are currently offering the latin mass it says that they should approach their bishop uh, but the word should there it's not saying they must it's not saying that they cannot continue unless it's certainly recommending that priests seek permission from their bishop they consult with their they they ask for permission from their bishop to offer the latin mass uh, anymore and i think that must apply to public masses i don't think that's in any way can be read as applying to masses he says without a congregation where he's just on his own but i think for the newly ordained i'm not so sure maybe the newly ordained to have any kind of permission to offer i'm sure canonists are going to weigh in on this a lot more because Pope Benedict had said that the Latin Mass had never been abrogated and that permission was always there. The final decree in this document says everything that's gone before must be ignored. This is the last word. But I don't know canonically, canon lawyers are going to weigh in on this as to whether you can just, whether a decree can just sweepingly, uh, without specifically mentioning documents and particular canons in documents whether it can sweepingly say you know ignore everything that went previously i'm sure plenty of people will weigh in on that one so are there any positive things to this document um well maybe one thing is that this document does challenge parish priests to really realize that the program of converting your parish never depended on introducing La the latin mass 100 percent maybe some parish priests have got into the mentality that look if i get latin mass everywhere that's just going to convert my parish i guess this document reminds you that there's a much bigger thing in converting your parish than getting the latin mass in it requires visiting your people, it requires Legion of Mary, it requires doing retreats for your parishioners, it requires doing catechesis in your parish, and really trying to reach out to people. 
Because maybe some priests had got into their head, look, if I get the Latin mass going, that's all I need to do. I'm doing, I'm doing the right thing, and that will solve the conversion of my parish. I'm sure not. I'm sure maybe that's a caricature, but I have come across that. And this document is going to challenge priests to have a broader perspective that, yeah, the Latin Mass, they may have a preference for it, but the program of conversion, it's going to mean getting back into the idea of the reform of the reform, offering the new Mass with utmost reverence, following the rubrics in a traditional mindset. That's going to have to be on people's minds again. I think we're going to see a crackdown in diocesan parishes of the Latin Mass. Maybe we're going to see more priests in really difficult situations with their bishops, and maybe some bishops in really difficult situations having to discipline priests, priests leaving diocesan structures, joining the SSPX maybe, joining traditional institutes maybe, if they've really grown attached to the Latin Mass. It's going to be a crazy uh, few years now, I think, as this new motu proprio takes effect. Like I said earlier, families who have grown attached to the Latin Mass, homeschooling children, this is a real blow for them because they have now embraced this as part of their family spirituality. And I guess my recommendation is um, for them is to go to their local SSPX chapel, because if it's being taken away from the diocese, go there so that your faith can continue to be enriched. As for diocesan priests, you're going to have to be inventive, maybe offering the mass in different locations, maybe, you know, I, I don't know, I'm lost for words at the moment. Let's see what happens with how the canonists weigh in on this document. But this is going to be a tough time for a lot of parish priests and probably a lot of bishops. They probably don't want to have to be enforcing these rules of Pope Francis here that are going to be even more divisive than Benedict's motu proprio for certain. Because the cat is out of the bag now. The Latin mass in some dioceses has become really prevalent and a lot of people are attached to it now. And a lot of priests have enjoyed and have been enriched by offering the Latin Mass. A lot of bishops are not going to want to enforce uh, these guidelines. They're going to take them as guidelines, realizing that they are in charge. This document says what already was the case, that the bishops are in charge of the liturgy in their diocese. And that is fair enough. That's a fair enough principle. The bishops are in charge of how the liturgy is offered in their diocese and I'm praying that the bishops will be charitable, the bishops will be loving towards their flock, especially those who have grown attached to the traditional liturgy, they'll be sensitive to priests and parish priests and that they will also contact Pope, Pope Francis and say the difficulties they are having with this new document. What can I say as a final message? A final message is remember the Catholic tradition, the unchanging truths of the Catholic faith, the unchanging faith, it begins in your own heart and in your own home and in your the entirety of your life. It isn't just going to be about attending the Latin Mass on Sunday. And maybe, maybe it can be whole identity stuff that you're like, okay, I'm attending Latin Mass on Sunday, therefore, identity-wise, I'm a true Catholic, a true traditional Catholic. I know this is a challenge that we can be and we must try to be fully Catholic in every sense of the word and maybe it could be a distraction just ticking off that Latin massing and think that you've got it. It's got to be a whole life. Like I said about parish priests earlier, the faith has to be really transmitted in its entirety and not just in a liturgy. Okay, may Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.